Coming up on The Shield, students got a taste of the great William Shakespeare as Valpo brought Shakespeare Week to campus. And VUTV sat down with head chef John Reed to discuss the quality of food in the Hari Union. That and more coming up on The Shield. Thanks for joining us for this edition of The Shield. I'm Nathan Albert. And I'm Lynette Grant. Starting off with our top story, recently some students have brought up concerns over the food choices at the Founders' Table in the Hari Union. VUTV News correspondent Andrew Whitmire has the story. Many students across campus approached VUTV with mixed emotions on the food choices at Founders. What do you dislike or like about Founders right now as far as the food quality and service? Um, I kind of dislike that it's, it's like Groundhog's Day and it's the same thing over and over again. Right. I dislike that there's not a lot of like healthy options. Um, a lot of the only good food is like the junk food. I do like the food in the show, Chef's Corner. Um, sometimes, you know, it's pretty bland, the food, you know, nothing, yeah. nothing exciting about it. After hearing mixed emotions from students, we sat down with Executive Director John Reed, who said American food is something that accepts all different cultures. The international students, such as some from China or Italy, that eat at Founders would like one of their home-cooked dishes made from time to time. did the best we could to come as close as we could to what mom cooked. So when you go home, you kiss mom and say, I missed you. They tried to do well. They did a pretty good job, but it's not like mom. So the different food is really a way for the, our students to explore, to sit down with that table of two that you don't know, introduce yourself and say, have you tried this tonight? So it, it's a growing uh, thing for us. Valparaiso University's food selections are varied from the salad bar to more adventurous dishes. Chef Reed hopes that he can provide a quality meal for every student. We have so much food offerings out there that, that there's, there's something for everyone. And it may not strike your fancy, but uh, we still have a grilled cheese or a cheese pizza or a salad and then go get a grilled chicken breast and chop it up in your salad and, and you know there's always something there for for them. How do you think Founders compares to other colleges around the area? I mean even though we complain about the food honestly I think Valpo offers better food than other universities which is nice um, but I mean obviously it's never gonna compare to mom and dad's cooking right. but at least at least the food ha it has somewhat quality. Reporting for The Shield here on VUTV I'm Andrew Whitmire. Last Wednesday, VU's College Mentors for Kids joined us here in the studio for an inside look into how a television studio operates. College Mentors for Kids is an organization that provides first through fifth grade students with guidance through a college buddy. With, a, with once a week meetings on campus, buddies offer the children connections that will help foster their personal growth and development through different activities on campus. The children were all shown aspects of what it takes to create a television broadcast by visiting different areas of our studio. First, they got to go behind the scenes to learn how to operate the cameras and direct a show from the control room. Then, our staff showed them what it was like to be on camera as the children took turns at the news desk and the green screen. If you're interested in volunteering with College Mentors for Kids or would like to learn more about the program, you can visit collegementors.org or email cheryl.demick at valpo.edu for more information. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. This line from the play As You Like It was truly the central idea of the inaugural Shakespeare Week here at Valpo. We're all natural storytellers as well, so just to kind of awaken that creativity in people is really exciting for us as performers. The theatre troupe, actors from the London stage, visited the, the university last week and performed As You Like It from Thursday to Saturday. Working on a bare stage, very minimal costume, just maybe one signifying piece for each character that we play that we have to be able to quickly pull on and off because we're all playing so many. So it's really about the power of the words to tell a story and the power of an audience to just go with us and, and invest in what we're, what we're showing and, and invite them into the story and have them participate in it with us. But what made their version so unique? Dean of Christ College, Peter Canellis, spoke about why the university brought Shakespeare to campus. Um, Shakespeare is a great kind of focal point to bring people from different disciplines together uh, in a university setting. I thought, well, if we could sort of spend a week and focus on Shakespeare-centered activities uh, on campus, we can try to bring people together in that space. 
Other highlights of the week included a Songs and Sonnets of Shakespeare Night and abridged versions of Hamlet and Macbeth. And with our first look at your Valpo weather forecast, Storm Shield meteorologist Emily Kennedy joins us in the studio. Emily? Thank you, Lynette. Um, we do have some warmer temperatures heading our way, which is some of the good news, but we do have some bad news as those temperatures um, for the next couple of days are going to be in the 30s. But um, we do have some April showers already heading our way at the end of March, so we're getting a little heads up on that, which is a good news. So hopefully we'll see some greener grass and green trees uh, coming our way the beginning of April. And approaching average temperatures, um, we're getting closer and closer there. Not just there yet, but as we get into the weekend, we'll take a look about how warm it is going to get. Interested in the television industry? Stop by our office in Schnabel Hall and join VU TV today. Welcome back to The Shield. It has now been over two weeks since Malaysian Flight 370 went missing on its trip from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing in early March. Sunlen Sarfati has the story. Authorities say the flight ended in the waters of the South Indian Ocean with no survivors, all 239 people lost. News came from a definitive statement by the Malaysian Prime Minister. It is therefore with deep sadness and regret that I must inform you that according to this new data, Flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. The conclusion came after new analysis of data by a British satellite company and accident investigators, which showed that MH370 flew along the southern corridor, its last position in the middle of the Indian Ocean, west of Perth, Australia. This is a remote location far from any possible landing sites. Family members were told the news first by this text message from Malaysia Airlines. They were briefed in person later by airline representatives in Beijing. Authorities say the investigation will continue. Still key, finding the flight and the flight and data recorders to find out what happened. Earlier today, Australian officials announced they have a lead. They spotted two objects in the key search area. One object is a gray or green circular object, the other an orange rectangular object. But so far, nothing has been definitively linked to the plane. Although some answers were given today, the mystery remains. In Washington, I'm Sunlin Serfati. The tragedy in Oso, Washington is continuing to play out. Last week, a mile-wide landslide hit the small community north of Seattle. Authorities now say at least eight people were killed and many more are still missing. Rescue teams are still looking for victims of this disaster, but Snohomish County Fire Chief Travis Hotz says there are little signs of any more survivors. I'm, I'm disappointed to tell you that um, after searching uh, a, a very large area of that debris field on foot, uh, we didn't find anybody alive. There was no sign of life. Uh, the only thing that I can report is that we found one uh, deceased victim bringing the fatality rate at this time to uh, four people total. At least six houses were destroyed and 16 were damaged as a result of the landslide. Authorities blame the slide on saturated ground conditions caused by heavy rainfall the area has seen in the past previous days. Early Monday morning, a CTA subway in Chicago derailed O'Hare International Airport. Officials say the CTA Blue Line route jumped the tracks at 2.50 a.m. Monday morning and landed on an escalator. There, may, there have been reports of as many as 32 injuries related to the accident. However, none being serious. CTA says they are investigating the train's operator who may have been falling asleep while operating the train. They plan to interview the woman who was operating the train to find out her routine that morning. Former TV judge Joe Brown landed on the other side of the law on Monday. Brown was arrested for contempt of court in Memphis, Tennessee earlier this week. He was in court representing a client in a child support case. 
When Brown became verbally abusive with Judge Harold Horn, Brown was originally given two days in jail for contempt of court, but that was then increased to five when he continued to yell in the courtroom. A Georgia high school baseball player may have saved the life of an umpire he saw collapse on the baseball field over the weekend. Rachel Stockman has more on this story. 16-year-old Alex Norwood and his baseball coach looked on as Newton County's varsity team played Saturday afternoon with vivid memories of what happened just hours earlier on Friday night. Um, it was in between innings, in between the second and the third inning, and Newton was on the field throwing their warm-up pitches, and um, the umpire just collapsed. Norwood said his instincts kicked in and he ran over to help the umpire who was suffering from some sort of medical emergency. This is video of the umpire from an iPad just moments before the incident. He had gotten someone to call 911 and he said, does anybody know CPR? And I got certified a little while ago. So I went out there and I started doing, I checked for a pulse and started doing compressions. Norwood had just become CPR certified two weeks ago. I, mean, I didn't think I'd ever really need to use it, but I'm really glad that I know how to do it now, and this is evidence as to why it's important to know how to do it. Jared Harris coaches Norwood's team at Rockdale High School. I thought I was going to turn around and see a professional. I mean, I thought I was going to see a, an EMT worker. That's how confident the voice behind me was, and when I turned around and saw Alex. I feel like I really didn't do that much. I feel like I only got it started, but I really didn't do that much before the EMT got there, and I feel like it was more the coaches and the EMT that really did it. Not only that, Harris says this incident is an important reminder. Really speaks on the importance of not only being CPR certified, but that anybody can do it. Coming up after the break, Storm Shield meteorologist Emily Kennedy joins us with her full Valpo weather forecast. And Shield sports reporter Brandon Vickery brings us the latest in all Valpo athletics. Stay with us right here on Channel 82. back to the Shield Valpo. Right here I got a snow cover mat for you for most of the United States. Uh, as you can see, Old Man Winter is finally waving that white flag as he begins to retreat back to the north. Uh, as we, uh, for Indiana, we have almost no snow cover at all besides a little part right here. Um, most of Michigan and Wisconsin and Minnesota still have all snow cover um, with northern parts having over a foot of snow still. But that's going to continue to melt as we have those warmer temperatures this weekend. Uh, here's a little bit of the bad news. Uh, uh, we're not quite average yet, as we're for tomorrow we're forecast to be around 41 degrees. The average trap is around 52, and we're nowhere near the record high of 79. But those temperatures are going to continue to warm up, and we're going to approach average as we hit later on in this week. But waking up Thursday morning at 9 a.m., we're going to be about 32 degrees, continuing to push through into Thursday. We're going to heat up to about 40. Uh, St. Louis is a little bit warmer at 51 and 60 in Kansas. And those warm temperatures are going to continue to move into our area. Uh, as we can see, Friday at 6 a.m., we're going to be a warm 44. So as you're going to classes, you only need a light jacket uh, as we're going to continue to heat up throughout the day as we see um, 42 for our high and uh, 45 for Davenport and 44 for Kansas City. But for um, tonight, we are going to sink down to a low of 28. So you're definitely still going to want your winter coat out with you as you're going about your night tonight. Uh, clouds are going to increase, and that's going to turn into hours for tomorrow as we have a warm front push through our area, which is going to be bringing us those warmer temperatures this weekend. Uh, hitting that high of about 40 foot one, like I said, uh, the winds are going to be pretty strong as we're going to be out of the south at 20 to 30 miles per hour at times. But for your five-day forecast, um, we do see that, like I said, showers all day on Thursday um, with 
the low sinking down into the 30s. Friday, we're going to heat up to 44, um, with the rain letting up halfway through the day, becoming partly cloudy. Saturday and Sunday, we're finally going to warm up as we go from the high 40s to the high 50s, with the high of about 58 on Sunday, um, and mostly sunny skies to partly cloudy on Sunday. Um, and then the rain is going to come back with a couple rumbles of, rumbles of thunder on Monday as we reach the high of about 58. So we're finally going to be reaching those warmer temperatures as we approach the weekend. So it's looking like this weekend is going to be a lot better in oh, terms of temperatures. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Get a chance to go out to the park, enjoy those sunny skies and those warmer temperatures. It'll be sure. definitely a good thing to get to get used to those temperatures again. Oh yeah, it's going to be so nice. Finally, spring is going to be really here. Besides just the dates of it being definitely. there. Definitely. Well, thank you, Emily. You're welcome. After the break, sports reporter Brandon Vickery joins us in studio with an update in Crusader Athletics. Back to the Shield. We throw it now to Shield sports reporter Brandon Vickery with a look at your Crusader athletics. Brandon? Lynette Banks, the weekend series at UIC got off to a promising start for the Valparaiso baseball team on Friday night with a victory, but the Flames swept a doubleheader Saturday to take two out of three from the Crusaders. In Friday night's opener, the Crusaders pushed across a run in the top of the ninth with help from a UIC error to claim a four to three victory. Spencer Mahoney scored three runs and collected two hits in the game. Starting pitcher Cole Webb tossed eight innings before Karsh Kowalczyk came on to latch down his fifth save of the season. A day later, it was all UIC as the Flames prevailed 5-4 and 6-3 to, to take both ends of a doubleheader. In the opening game, Dalton Lundin took the loss after yielding five runs on ten hits in seven and two-thirds innings. The Flames scored twice in the bottom of the eighth, to snag the lead for good in the series finale. UIC plated three runs in the bottom of the first and never looked back en route to the win. Valparaiso, now 9-9 nine nine overall, resumes conference play this weekend with a three-game series at Oakland beginning on Friday afternoon. The Valpo softball team also opened its conference slate this weekend in a rematch of last year's Horizon League championship against Youngstown State. The Crusaders split Saturday's doubleheader, winning Game 1 7-4 before falling 12-9 in Game 2. Senior Amanda Wisniewski posted three hits in the first game, including a three-run home run in the top of the seventh that proved to be the difference in the game. Taylor Weisenhofer notched the win in relief as she was charged with one earned run over three innings. In the second game, the Crusaders jumped in front with a four-run first inning, but could not hold on. To the lead. The Crusaders are now 6-19 overall and 1-1 one one in league play, entering a three-game weekend series at UIC. In men's track and field, Adam Bruno, Mark Pinot, Jeremy Getz, Justin Zasso, and Jacob Frey all picked up first place finishes in the Puma Invite on Saturday. On the women's side, Elizabeth Bloy turned in two first place performances, while Jasmine Taylor broke her own school record in the high jump. 
The men's tennis team won its first Horizon League match since April 17, 2010 this weekend by downing UIC 7-0. The Crusaders followed that up with a 6-1 defeat to DePaul on Sunday. A look at Valpo Sports. I'm Brandon Vickery. Thanks, Brandon. Coming up after the break, Storm Shield meteorologist Emily Kennedy joins us for the last look at your Valpo weather forecast. Hi, everybody. I'm Dick Vitale of ESPN, and I'm on VU TV. It's awesome, baby, with a capital A. <laughs> on a campus plagued with terrible weather, Valpo students suffer from boredom with no motivation to leave their room. They begin to search for free movies and stumble upon Valpo's new free movie streaming website where you get unlimited free access to recent movies like Despicable Me 2 and Jobs at the tips of your fingers. So if you're feeling bored, then don't wait. Grab some friends, find a seat, and enjoy a movie on movies.valpo.edu. You won't always find meteorology students hovered over a computer or in front of a green screen. This past weekend, weather enthusiasts came together in Valpo. Storm Shield meteorologist Rachel Dunzing has the story. Meteorology students and professionals from across the region gathered in the Hari Union Ballrooms Saturday, March 22nd for the 12th annual Great Lakes Meteorology Conference. The event featured speakers from many areas of meteorology, including presentations from Valparaiso University alumnus Jackie Ritzman and Tony Liza. The Topeka tornado went right over Vernon's Mound, which was thought to protect uh, the city of Topeka, and that didn't work all that well. Operational forecasters from Chicago and Milwaukee. Uh, you've got the rear inflow jet. You've got a lot of things coming together. It's now organized linear. You've got the whole idea of the bow, and we're ready to go. And students, both from VU and the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. There was also a poster viewing session for students who had done research projects over the summer. In addition to listening to different speakers, those in attendance had the opportunity to be involved in interactive forecasting exercises. Zach Sefkovic, senior meteorology major and president of the VU Joint Chapter of the American Meteorological Society and National Weather Association, says that this conference is very important for undergraduate students. Having that undergraduate experience early on where you can talk in a conference setting to real professionals about their careers, their research, it's very, very, very important. And so being able to bring that onto the campus environment on a weekend that's normally free for people, it's just an excellent environment for people to learn and work in. The keynote speaker for the conference was Ms. Sarah Jamison, the Senior Service Hydrologist from the Cleveland, Ohio Weather Forecast Office. She spoke on two historical flood events from 1913 and how it has affected us in the present. I've worked with a lot of NOAA partners um, in order to promote these for safety messages. And I thought that it's such an intriguing um, story behind one year with these two very, very significant disasters and how most of the public was not aware of it. Jameson was excited to come speak at the conference and says undergraduate students should take advantage of these events. One of the most important things to get out of these kind of conferences and from my perspective is um, the networking, getting to know people, getting to talk to people with different experiences in your field and find out well what track did they take to get to where they are or what landmine should I avoid and, and having just a connection so someone you can email if you have a question in the future. I think that's the most important thing to come out of this. The event was yet another great opportunity for the meteorological community to bond together and of course geek out over the weather. Reporting for The Shield, I'm Storm Shield meteorologist Rachel Dunsing. Well, I don't know about all of you guys, but I'm sick and tired of this cold. Mm. Groundhog's Day was, what, seven weeks ago? Yes. And apparently he saw his shadow that day, so there should only be six more weeks of winter. And he lied, obviously, because we're on to our seventh week of winter-like temperatures as those 30s are continuing for the next couple of days. Uh, actually heating up, though, after today uh, to 41. Showers are going to be sticking around, so make sure you take your umbrella with you to classes on Thursday, even Friday morning as it will stick around for part of the day. But once those showers move through and that warm front, we're going to continue to heat up. Uh, and those sunny skies are going to stick around. So Saturday and Sunday, if you get the chance to go outside, make sure you go outside and enjoy that as it's going to be mostly sunny to partly cloudy. And those the highs getting up into the upper 50s on Sunday and Monday. But on Monday, the bad news is, is that 
the rain showers is going to um, come back. So make sure you have your umbrella handy with you. And we may even hear a couple rumbles of thunder on Monday. So we got all kinds of spring heading our way. Well, since we're going into April, it'd be nice to have those warmer temperatures Yeah, we're again. definitely starting to get those April showers already at the end of March. So. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you, yes, Emily. And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of The Shield. I'm Nathan Albert. To stay up to date on all your Valpo news, weather, and sports, log on to youtube.com slash ValpoVUTV or like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at ValpoVUTV. For Emily Kennedy and Brandon Vickery, I'm Lynette Grant. Thanks for watching and have a nice week, Valpo.